what's up guys welcome back to the channel in this particular video i will explain the problem find duplicates in an array this problem is really interesting and little bit tricky guys so make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video and at last it's my guarantee that you will have complete idea about how this problem can be solved starting right away from the problem statement so it says that you are given an array a of size n which contains elements from 0 to n minus 1 all you need to do is you have to find all the elements occurring more than once in the given array also return the answer in ascending order and if there is no such element found like uh, if there is no element which is occurring more than once then you have to return a list containing minus one right after this one note is given here and this note basically says that the extra space is only for the array to be returned right and try and perform all the operation within the provided array okay so it basically means that while solving the problem we cannot use any extra space we have to use the given array only and we can use extra space only while returning the array so let me explain with an example guys let's say i have n equals to 6 and i have an array which contains element 1 1 2 3 and 4 4 for this array guys you can see that we have two elements which are occurring more than once right so this means that i have to return these two elements in the answer so answer is going to be a type of list so it contains first one then four right so these are the duplicate elements that we have and now you can see some things here the first thing is i am using some extra space but while solving i don't need to uh, like i don't have to use any extra space this is what this particular note means after this guys you can see that i'm returning the list in ascending order this is what the problem asks us to do right so one example is given in the problem statement also so let me explain this example i have n equals to four and i have four elements in the array but you can see that there is no any duplicate element right guys right so output is going to be minus one for this particular example because whenever we don't have any duplicate element then we have to return a list which is containing minus one right so this is about the problem statement guys let's talk about the solution now okay so guys i have written one example here and i'm going to use this particular example in order to explain the approach first of all see according to the problem our task is to look for duplicate elements right and duplicate elements are those elements which occur more than once so the first idea that comes to our mind is we can use an explicit map to store the frequency of each element then those elements which have frequency more than one are going to be added in our answer like for this example we have two four and six right but hold on guys according to the problem we are not allowed to use any extra space right we can use extra space only for the array to be returned which is the answer and otherwise we have to try and perform all the operation within the provided array this means that we cannot use this particular map here instead we have to use the given array as a map only so we have to use the given array as a map right how we can use the given array as a map first of all guys let me talk in brief about how we store how we use an array as a map i will not take more than 30 seconds for this guys see let's say i have an array based map right so this map is going to have some index 0 1 2 3 and so on right see here you can see guys first of all i have value 1 so i will simply increase the frequency at this particular index by 1 so initially all these frequency are 0 right all these frequency are zero so i will increase this by one this means that one is occurring one time after this i have two so i will increase this frequency by one this means that two is occurring one time then again i have two so i will increase by uh, one again now it is two right so this means that two is occurring two time similarly i will come here three is occurring one time so guys this is how i store the value in array based map this means that every index i is going to tell us the frequency of array of i right so guys this is very important to understand about array based map now what is the size of this particular map so the size of this particular map is totally dependent on what is the maximum value that we have in this particular array so according to the problem this array is going to have value from 0 to n minus 1 right so this array is going to have total n values so the size of this map is going to be o of n right okay uh, my bad i don't need to write o of n i need to write n only right so the size of map is going to be n so now why i have explained this to you guys because you can see that we are given the array of size n as well so the array also has size n this means that we can use this array as a map right so let me explain how we can use this particular array as a map 
Like I have explained here, we are first going to uh, use the similar approach for the given array and then we will try to figure out some problems and then we will solve those particular problems, right? So guys, first of all, let me remove this as well. And now, let's see. I have this array. First of all, let me write the indices. I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? And guys, we are going to use the similar approach what we have in that particular array based map, right? So guys, what we do is we have these indices and I start with the first element. I have one here, right? So when I have one here, I will simply increase the frequency at this particular element by one. So now I have three here because I already have two and I increase by one. After this, I will come to this particular point And now you can see that guys, I have the value three here. The value two is lost now. The value 2 is lost so we don't have original value here so now this is going to create some problems like we can't lose the values while are traversing over the array right so the first problem that we have is the value get lost so what we need to do is in order to avoid this is we are going to use two values at the same index the first value is going to be original value and the second value is going to be frequency right these two values I need to store at the same index but you will say that how it is possible in an array we can't store two values at the same index but guys now I am going to tell you a very important concept that is going to explain how you can store two values at the same index in order to explain the idea first of all let me use an example so let's say I have an array and I want to store two values at some index i right so guys what are those two values the first one is 5 and the second value is 2. I want to store these two values at this particular index. How I can achieve this guys? So see, I can store 52 here and now, now you can see that this 52 contains 5 and 2 as well. So I am able to store two values at the same index. But the question is how you can get these values out? Like if you have 52 somewhere in the array, so how you can get 2 out of this array and 50 out of this array? Uh, like 5 out of this array, this is the question, right? So guys, in order to get this, I am going to write another uh, like representation for this number. Can I write 5 into 10 plus 2? And now you can see that I have 2 here and I have 5 here. Now you can compare this particular representation with the Euclid division formula. It says that dividend, let me write 52 here so that I can compare. Dividend is equal to quotient into uh, this is divisor plus this is nothing but remainder, right? So guys, now... I am going to write the observation. See, this remainder is nothing but dividend mod divisor, right? And this quotient is nothing but dividend divided by uh, divisor. So, I can write this as well. I can write uh, this 2 is nothing but 52 mod 10. And this 5 is nothing but 52 divided by 10, isn't it guys? So, this is the same observation that we can use to store two numbers in an array. Now, if I use this representation in terms of these values, so I will write whatever is my array of i, let's say the array of i is equal to n. So, I can write n equals to frequency, frequency is the replacement for this q here, into divisor. What I have to divisor? Let's say divisor is some constant because this is not uh, going to be 10 in every case. Plus, we have remainder. In, instead of remainder, I am going to use original here, right? So guys, this is the representation that we can use to store two values in the same index, right? So till now, guys, we have figured out how we can store two values at the same index, but we have not talked about the approach, right? So now we are going to talk about the approach. I hope this is clear to you guys. So now I want to discuss the main approach behind the solution. So first of all let me erase this so that i can get some space right so guys uh, let me erase everything from this particular page okay now i have some space here and what i'm going to you do is i'm going to talk about the approach see guys what i will do is i will simply traverse the array and while traversing the array whenever uh what i will do is i'll simply say that okay i have one here so i will increase the value at index one by c right after this I will come here, you can see that this is 2, so I will increase the value at index 2 by C. After this, I have 2 here, so I will again increase the value at index 2 by C. So now you can see that the count of C is something which is representing the frequency of that number at that index, right? So guys, can I write, let's say, I add this C n times for any particular index i. So I will write n into C plus uh, whatever is the original value because initially this uh, like array contains the 
initial value which is array of i right so guys now you can compare this representation with this particular representation you can see that this n is representing frequency this c is some constant and this is array of i right so guys now what i can do is i can tell you the approach the approach is simply start a loop okay uh let me raise this guys i have done a mistake here so simply start a loop for i equals to zero then i is smaller than n then i plus plus guys first of all let me tell you one thing that this particular number c is basically a constant and there is one rule that i need to follow while declaring that particular constant this constant can have any value but there is one rule that i need to follow while declaring this right so this c let's say i have not declared this right i will talk about this particular c later so first of all see one thing that from this particular number from this particular number i will start this with this one and after this i will come to this two right and this two will now become when i come to this two this is now nothing but two plus c right so guys how i can get the original value from this i can get the original value by simply doing the remainder so original value is nothing but n then mod then c i have already explained you this guys right so now you can see that i can get original value which is nothing but let's say num equals to uh whatever is my array of i because this n is basically representing the array of i right mod c after this i got this particular value so i will say that okay now i will go to array of one because i have one here so i will go to array of num array of num and then i will increment this value by c this is what i am doing in the approach right so i will do array of num plus equals to c guys this is all we need to do right and when this particular loop completes then i will have the frequency stored in this particular array right i have modified the array now so after this in order to get the frequency i am going to start one more loop i'll say that for i equals to zero i is smaller than n then i plus plus how i can get the frequency guys so in order to get the frequency i have to do this is the frequency right so i will do frequency equal to n divided by c because this is the quotient right if i compare this with the euclid division lemma i have already explained this guys so what i can do is i can get frequency equal to frequency is nothing but uh array of i divided by c and this is what i can do and after this i can simply say that okay if my frequency is greater than one then i have got one element so i'll say that answer dot add i right because i'm talking array of i is basically talking about frequency of i you can see that when i say array of one then this is basically representing the frequency of one right that's what i'm doing here as well so initially we need a answer list and answer list is going to be modified here at last we just need to return answer list so guys this is the approach that we are going to follow this is the approach now let's talk about this particular element which is c so while declaring c we have to make sure that c is always greater than n minus 1 so the minimum value which is greater than n minus 1 is nothing but uh, n itself right so c is going to be declared with value n but let me prove mathematically why c should be greater than m so let me tell you guys uh like why sh c should be greater than n minus 1 so i have n equals to i have this particular representation let me write n equals to frequency into c plus original right now let's say this original i'm actually saying that this c should be greater than o right each time what is this o this o is nothing but the array of i which is present in the array itself original value right so guys this c should be greater than o why i am saying this because let's say if c is equal to o if c is equal to o then i will have f cross c plus uh, i have c here right because c is equal to o so now i can write f plus 1 into c and at this point guys when i do this particular operation so you can see that the frequency of c will be f plus 1 but this is actually wrong right the actual frequency of c is f so this is the problem that is being created when c is equal to o and if c is greater than o now let's talk about if c is greater than o so let's say i have a number 6 is greater than 5 right so can i write 6 equals to 5 plus 1 because this is the factor which is representing how much 6 is greater than 5 right so similarly similarly let's say if my uh original if my original is greater than c so can i write uh original equal to c plus something which is x x is the factor here i have already explained this using an example so now let's say my original is greater than c so at this point can i write 
f cross c plus c plus x why i'm writing c plus s because i can replace original with this value so now again i have got f plus 1 cross c plus x and you can see that now i am again i am getting f plus 1 as the frequency so guys this is the proof that why c should be greater than array of i and the maximum value of array of i which can be there is n minus 1 right so that's why i am declaring c with n so this is the whole approach this is the whole code that you need to follow and now talking about the time and space complexity so the time complexity is nothing but o of n right and space complexity let me write time complexity here and space complexity is again o of n why o of n guys because we are using a answer list to store the answer right otherwise we are not using any extra map here so now let me quickly show you the code Okay, so guys, this is the C++ code and this is the Java code that we have and we have written the Python code as well. So now you can see that the only thing that I have not explained you is this particular condition, right? And I don't think there is much to explain about this condition. The problem says that if we have an answer list which is empty, so we have to store minus one so that it can give minus one in the output, right? After this, I have already explained this, how we can get the frequency and I have already explained this, how we can like store the frequency, right? Store the frequency and original in the same value. So guys, this is the base, right? Which is uh, the re replacement for C, whatever I have explained you in the uh, like whiteboard, right? So guys, this is all about this video. Now, I hope everything is clear to you. Thank you.